Hello and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract and we're in the data module. We're in oh, the fifth one, fifth, fifth video on that. So go back and take a look at the earlier videos if you've just arrived. Took a look about what is data, what is information. We saw how to store that in local storage on, on the user's computer. And then we wanted to find out how to store it in a database so that we could share stuff with other people. Um, and we have to go through a server script called PHP, in this case, to, to do that. So we're learning more than just JavaScript here. We're taking a look at PHP and MySQL. We're approaching it either from the canvas. So this uh, this one's here on the canvas. Woohoo! I just uh, love doing that. Uh, it's a canvas form. And we are also uh, going to be taking a look in the future at um, saving shapes, like how to save a shape, a collage, for instance, and have other people see that. And we're also taking a look at the HTML side. So here's an HTML version, HTML form, where we're submitting that and we're seeing, oh, Dartha Zen has, has got um, some results here. And this is being sent via, via get, so we can adjust these things up here on the, the, the line, 89. Now Darth Zen has 89. And uh, we had, I think, added to Darth Zoo. Uh, now, the results are coming back only for the people who have this color. So nobody else in our database has, has put in some results for this color. And what we're wanting to look at now, we took a look last time at how to store, save the, the data that we're sending. And what we want to see now is how to retrieve it, how to select it so that we can show a table, a table like this. And that's where we're at. Let's reduce this down and take a look at our PHP code then to retrieve this information. Oh, how exciting. Ah, good, I think I see it already. There it is right there. Uh, it's called select. But maybe just a quick overview of where we were at in this PHP. There's the HTML that's preparing the start of it. Now note, we're not in PHP. This is just HTML. We're in a PHP page, form.php. But if we scroll down, whoop, there's us starting the PHP now, and we're just under the body here. So we're starting our PHP, so any output from PHP will be put into the body. If we go all the way down to the bottom, there's the end of our PHP, and here's the end of the body on the outside there. All right, so we've got a big uh, bit of PHP in here where we're connecting to our database. This was us connecting to the database. We do it sneakily like that. We receive the information coming from the form, uh, and uh, then we inserted it into the table. So this one's the table right here, and we bound that with these question marks to the variable names. So the variable names are name, count, color. This is what we took a look at in the last video. If we scroll on down here now, we're about to make a new query. So here it is. We're going to do the same kind of process to find out what is in the database and we're wanting to bind. See, if we take a look here, we're asking uh, where the color is, whatever color they've entered. And that color that they've entered might have some bad data in it. So we put the question mark in there and we're doing the binding again. And then we have to loop through the results from the table and we create uh, what you see here what you see here, like that. So that's us looping through the results that come from the database. Isn't that neat? Eh, it looks just like uh, this stuff here. There they are, Darth Zen, Darth Zoo. Here are our various numbers. And then over here, Darth Zen, Darth Zoo, various numbers. But we're showing them in the HTML through the PHP. All right, let's uh, get into the specifics then. So here's our query, select the name, the count, and the color. So if you only wanted to get the names for your, for your data, then you, you don't need to ask for those either, or ask for those. You could just say, give me the name. You can also say, give me all of the fields. Now that doesn't mean give me all of the records. That means just give me the data from the record for all of the fields. So there's quite a big difference there. Uh, we're, we don't need the ID, so we're not asking for the ID. We're just asking for the name, the count, and the color. Oh, and the date. And where did the date come from? We don't want the date. Okay, the name, 
the count and the color from Zim Learn Form. What is that? Is that the database or the table? It's the table. That's right. So the table is where our information is. The database was already connected way up here. It's um, our MySQLi object right here. This MySQLi object was connected to the database way up here. MySQLi database. Right. So the database came first. So this is the table. So we're selecting these things from the table. Now, that would get us all of the records. Shall we see what all of the records look like? Let's delete this stuff. Boop. Delete that stuff. We upload it. Let's make sure it uploaded. Are we on schedule yet? Because I've been seeing some things. So yeah, there we go. It uploaded. And we come back here and we refresh. Ooh. There's all of the data that is in the table database. All of it. Okay. So that select those things from uh, from that the table. We'll undo here. Oops, uh, control X. We'll undo here. However, we're putting some limitation where the color is, well, what we're going to do is match that to whatever was submitted. So whatever color they have submitted, remember this comes from here. This is the data that they're submitting. We collect that via get. If we sent via post, we'd have to change that to post. If we did have post, once again, if we had post, we wouldn't see anything on the query line here, and we wouldn't be able to just you know play around with it there. However, for a final form, we should, the form of the final form should be post rather than, than get there for the method. All right, coming back on down. Whoa, too far down. Where did we get to? So here, color from Zinlearn, where the color is, you know, we're going to put the color in there. And then we're ordering it by the count. We're making descending and we're limiting to 10. So in other words, the top 10. All these things are a little bit extra to show you some of the things that you can do in SQL. There are many things you can do in SQL. But so these are very common, I guess, uh, to be able to put something in, insert, pull something out. Uh, delete is another thing you might want to know how to do. And update. Update is uh, important too. And we'll get to update when we go to the collage thing because we want to update the stuff. We don't want to keep on making new collage elements. If you move them around, we don't make new ones every time you move them. We have to update the ones that are in there. So you'll have to wait to see that. But it's uh, very similar here. You would use update. And this is SQL. You can just go online and uh, search for SQL, how to do things. And there's lots of examples. It's been going on in the world for, for I don't know, 20 years or more. All right. So there they are. Order by the count, uh, descending, and limit them to 10. If you don't want to limit them by 10, don't put the limit in. If you don't want to ascend, descending, make it ascending, take it out. If you don't want to order it by count, <laughs> remove it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so those are just extra things. Let's jump down into this, the statement stuff now. So we're making a new statement like we did before. We're preparing that by passing in the query like we did before. We're binding, in this case, we only have one parameter that came from the outside world. These ones are coming from the database, but this comes from the client, the front end. It happens to be a string, the color. And so uh, that comes from up here, color. All right, great. And we execute the statement. Now, uh, stuff is coming back from the database. And one way to handle it, there's a few ways, but <clears throat> posted some comments on this. You can see the comments on this one right here. So this is the form.php and this is the form comments.php. So if you scroll down in here, all of the things that I've been saying are also available for you to see in comments and those will be in the zip file. So you're welcome to kind of read back through all of this stuff to see what we were saying about those things. Okay. Um, Anyway, let's carry on. We are going to bind the results. Like I said, there's a few different ways to do that we, we mentioned later. As a matter of fact, we can try some in the future. But for now, we're going to bind the results. And we choose our own names for these. 
So these three things right here match these three things right here. So whatever we've selected, whatever fields or columns we've selected, we make up names for them here. We could probably call them the same names without any problems, but just in case, we, we call them temporary. Now we're calling them temporary because as we loop through the results here, so uh, here's us looping through with a while loop, we keep on replacing, uh, you know, we, we, we handle, well, getting ahead of myself. Let's, let's uh, save it for, for just a moment here. So we start off by echoing the beginning of a table along with the heading. Remember when we echo, we're inside the body now. When we echo, we can echo PHP, and this is the stuff that will show up in our result page. So there we are starting a table. The table's fine to use if you're actually presenting a table, and we're presenting a table of results. Don't go and try and put them in divs and stuff, and, or in some sort of uh, responsive table. It's like, uh, probably not. If you're just wanting some <laughs> Wanting some results like this, you you want them to look like results and stay that way. Just put them in a table. All right. So now while we're going to statement dot fetch, so the fetch is going to grab us one row at a time. So each time we call fetch, it's going to um, put the data from that row into these variables right here. So kind of twisty, but eh, so be it. That's how they. Uh, one way, like I said, to do it. Um, let's see. So we've got the statement.fetch or uh, at fetch or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and if there is no row left, if there's no results left, then the while will stop. So that's kind of neat. It's a fun statement, isn't it? Uh, while there is a row to fetch, we'll, we'll use it. And here we are using it. We're now going to echo the table row and put our field names inside of the table cells. So this is the table cells, TD, table data, neat. Or table definition, I'm not sure what that actually stands for. But uh, that's us getting the name, the count, and the color for each um, column, or well, column for each row there. Once the while is finished, we have no rows left, we echo the end of the table, and we close our statement for good measure. If we couldn't connect through this query statement right here, if when we tried to prepare it, uh, I don't know, it couldn't find something. I'm not even sure what happened. It couldn't find a, a field there. It might echo, uh, sorry, could not retrieve the scores. Okay, being through here. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that concludes then the uh, our ability to uh, go back to a form here, an HTML form. That was called, uh, whatever, if we go back, I bet you it's going to go back through some, yeah. Uh, an HTML form, we submit, and uh, the, the answer comes back. Oh, I don't think we uploaded this, did we? The answer comes back, so I upload that. Um, like so, in a table. Very cool, huh? We've taken a look at the HTML side. When we come back, we're going to take a look. Well, we've got um, this thing called Ajax left to look at. So we'll decide whether we want to show you the sort of Ajax approach via the canvas. Uh, maybe we'll show you the Ajax approach via HTML since we were already in HTML. And then we will um, come back into the canvas and, and take a look at the equivalent there. Sound good? Woohoo! I think so. Yeah, how about uh, how about some um, some more later? Are you gonna come back for more? I hope so. Of course, you should practice. Get, get working on this stuff, huh? All right, talk to you later. This is Doctor Abstract, uh, ZimJS.com. If you're um, if you're digging this, check out some of the earlier lessons as well, and join us on Slack, ZimJS.com/slash/slack. Ciao. Have a good day or night.